one of the things that we come across at ID quite frequently is people ringing us up and asking us for a single number that represents a group or a change in a group in the population. And we always respond by saying, don't ask us for a number, tell us what story you need to tell. And we will use a series of information from the census to tell that story. And in this tutorial, we'll show you how we tell stories using census data and why it's so important to use different aspects of the census to tell the story rather than just looking for one or two numbers. So the story we're going to tell today is about the changing ethnic diversity in the city of Greater Bendigo in Victoria. So Greater Bendigo is a country town uh, in Victoria. It's been growing. And I guess it sits within the context of country which has been growing substantially by migrating people from overseas. And the biggest countries of immigration that we've been seeing in Australia in the last five years have been people coming from China and India. So the question really is, are they just migrating and settling in the capital cities or are they moving to regional centres like Greater Bendigo as well? So... There's all sorts of tools to assist us to explore that um, and tell that story within the city of Greater Bendigo's community profile. So we're going to go and look at the ethnicity questions from the census. And typically when you're looking at how the ethnic makeup of a place is changing, you'd look at country of birth data to see where people are coming from. So in Be Greater Bendigo, we can see that this is the top 10 overseas countries of birth. And you can see that the United Kingdom and New Zealand are number one and two, so English-speaking countries. Um, and that the next country after that is India, and China does feature in the top ten as well. Um, so India first and then China in terms of total number. Uh, and when you look at growth, Indian population has grown by more than twice that of the Chinese population. But when we have a look at Bendigo in general, you can see here that they only have 3,465 people in the entire population of over 100,000 from non-English speaking backgrounds. It's only 3.4% of their total population, which is a very low proportion. When we benchmark that to Victoria, you can see that typically in Victoria about just under 20% of the population are from non-English speaking backgrounds. So it's a very low proportion. But given the level of migration that's been happening in, in Australia since 2006, you can see that the number has changed. So it's gone up by 1,048 people from 2.6% of the population to 34 And so that's a significant increase off a base of only 2,400 in 2006. It's grown by 1,048. And that kind of thing is noticeable in a... Uh, it's significant in a, in a country town. And we can see when we look at the, the charts, you can see that even though the United Kingdom, New Zealand, India are the top three, they are in significantly lower proportions and is typical for the rest of Victoria. But that they are all growing, and in fact of the top ten countries of birth, the only one that's in decline is Germany. Now... Let's go and have a look, just to build the story, and in fact, on the profile, um, we always give you suggestions about where you can go to continue building this story. And we're going to go through and have a look at languages spoken. So here we're looking at the top ten languages spoken at home. And the number one, other than English, is a language which is not spoken in India or China, um, and it's Karen. And Karen is a language spoken by the Chin people of Burma. And it's grown from zero to 284 people in just a five-year period. So that's significant growth. And this is a population that have lived in refugee camps and have been fleeing persecution. So it immediately flags to me that the city of Greater Bendigo has a policy of welcoming these refugees into their community. But after that, we have Mandarin speakers, and we also have our Hindi speakers. Now, interesting, even though we had twice as many Indians moving into Bendigo as Chinese, the Chinese languages dominate. And that could be for a couple of reasons. It could be because a lot of Indians already speak English um, as an English colony, or it could be that as well as some people being born in 
China, there's already an established Chinese community in Greater Bendigo that still speak Chinese languages at home. So how can we establish which is the case? Well, we need to continue exploring, and this time we're going to have a look at ancestry. So ancestry measures the ancestral groups that people feel that they belong to or that they identify with. So you may not have been born in England, but you may consider your ancestry to be English. Um, or, alternatively, you may have been born in Australia, but you have Chinese parents and you consider your ancestry to be Chinese. So in Greater Bendigo, if you remember from the country of birth data, there were only 200 or so people from China, people who had been born in China, but there are just over a thousand who consider themselves to be of Chinese ancestry. So there is actually quite a significant existing Chinese population in Greater Bendigo, and if you know the history of the area, you know that it was a gold rush area and that a lot of Chinese um, moved into the area at that time. And again, we can continue to, to tell that story with the data by looking at when people arrived. So you can see that Bendigo's people born overseas arrived, there are 7,000 of them, and many of them arrived in the 1960s or earlier, or in fact before the 1970s. And there was a tailing off, and then we've had quite significant increases in overseas migration since 2006. So in conclusion, you can say that the city of Greater Bendigo has very low proportions of people born overseas, that the proportion of people born overseas has been growing significantly, that it is getting a share of the population from China and from India, but that in fact these are both um, exceeded by a population of refugees from Burma, and that the Indian population is probably newer ethnic population than the Chinese population. So new people coming from China already have an existing community that they can tap into, whereas new people coming from India may not have the advantages of that existing community. And so all of these things then feed into the council's response to that change in their ethnic makeup.